In this lecture, we're going to talk about sample size and power. We're going to talk about what components make a good sample. And then we're going to talk about the appropriate sample size to collect, given the variability of your data and the error contained within it. This is a quote from Peter Diamandis. He's an entrepreneur, uh, very well known in the business world. And he says that every second of the day, our senses bring in way too much data that we can possibly process in our brains. And so he brings up a good point. When are we going to stop collecting so much data? How much data is enough? We can spend our entire careers collecting data. Lots of people do just that. So how do we know when we have enough data to answer some question of interest? To do that, we need to find the right sample size. We need to find the sample size necessary to obtain some confidence interval with a specified tolerable width and level of confidence. This requires knowledge about how variable our sample is. We might represent that variability with sigma or the standard deviation. We need to know some desired confidence level. And we need to know some maximum width of the confidence interval we're willing to tolerate. When people ask you how much data is good enough, we need to be thinking about these things. So then what makes a sample good? Well, one is that it's unbiased. And what we say by that is that the sample approximates the population. It needs to be efficient. It needs to be easily obtainable. That is to say, can we get the data and are the data representative of the population? And it needs to be flexible. That is to say, can we use the data to address multiple objectives? We can often address these three attributes in gathering and collecting data in the ag and natural resource disciplines. We talked about how to find the variability of a set of data, or how to find sigma, the standard deviation. We could conduct pilot studies. Well, we don't have enough to invest in an entire field season's worth of data, but could we go out for one day and collect enough data to see how variable our data might be? We could consult with experts in the field. I know this research team recently did a similar study. What did they find for variability in the data that they were working with? We can look at historical data. We want to collect new data this year. What about the data last year? How variable were those data? What about data from previous years? Sometimes we don't know the standard deviation, but we can approximate it. If we know the range of the data, that is, we know some maximum value and we know some minimum value, if we divide that by four, that's a quick and dirty approximation to find sigma or to find the standard deviation. This will be helpful in some of our calculations. When we use simple random sampling, we need to set some kind of allowable error. That is to say, the allowable error can be turned to A, and it's expressed as a percent of the mean. That is, my, I'm going to set my allowable error to 5%. I want to be within plus or minus 5% of the mean. And so this here, what you're seeing, is the formula for our sample size. We want to know N, how many samples to collect. We need to know t, t is the value from a t-table or from software. We need to know the coefficient of variation, or cv, and we express that in percent. And then we need to know the allowable error, which we also express as a percent. So our data are always sampled randomly. There's no, there is risk in making the wrong conclusion. Remember back to that table we saw that talked about type 1 and type 2 error. The probability of committing a type 1 error is alpha, or our level of significance. Remember then that alpha is typically set to 0.05 for most of our statistical analyses. The probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis is 1 minus beta. We call that the power of a test. And the power really depends on the sample size. So this is really why it's important to be thinking about type 1 and type 2 error as they result in your analysis. 
Now we're going to do a calculation that talks about some data, and we want to find out how many samples to collect. So we have a farmer that's collected some pilot data on soybean yields. They want to look at different effects of intensive irrigation. So this farmer collects data from six fields, and the data are there. 26, 36, 30, 23, 40, and 38 bushels per acre. So let's assume an allowable error of 10% of the mean. So we can allow our, our estimate to be off by 10% around the mean. How many soybean fields should you measure? Find the sample size necessary to estimate a population mean with 95% confidence. And so we'll do some calculations that find the right sample size to collect for these soybean data.